great. Welcome, y'all. Um, my name is Liz. I'm one of the owners of Expand Yoga here in Tacoma, Washington. And what is it? It is uh, June 13th, 2020. It's been um, quite a week, right? So um, I know that I've been feeling kind of down and, um, you know, kind of confused, I guess, to be honest. So, um, yeah, so I'm going to try to make a practice that is basically something that I would use to soothe myself and to deal with how I'm feeling and just sharing that with you guys. Um, it's often nice to start in a comfortable seat and I have some knee stuff going on so I'm going to give myself plenty of height. I usually do anyway really. And so to get, um, to get some props that allow you to sit up tall and make sure that there's no pain in your knees or hips or anything like that can be a really nice way to start. You want to make sure as you sit down that the floor of your pelvis is able to face the ground. So for me, that means tipping my sitting bones back and making sure that the triangular space at the floor of my pelvis is facing the blocks that I'm sitting on. And then palms just can face down. If you'd rather face up, great. And sit tall with your shoulders relaxed. And take a moment to check in with yourself. Give yourself some space. Last time we did this, I shared that some of my favorite instruction for seated meditation is sit down, stand up, and stay still. And another one of my favorite instructions is from um, a child's yoga class. And the teacher would apparently say, sit still and pretend to meditate. Because right? I think that that's um, how it feels sometimes. It just feels like you're pretending to do it. And I think that's how it goes for a while. And um, there's nothing wrong with that. Give yourself about 10 more breaths here. And then you can start to softly open your eyes. Um, the practice today is going to attempt to create a little bit of lightness, right? Lightness in ourselves, try to lift, lift us up, right? So um, there can be a heaviness that sets in and to try to lift yourself up, right? How, how do you do that, right? How do you raise yourself up? And the breath is one way, right? Just taking some deep breaths can be really helpful. Um, there are a few other techniques that I know of that might help. Um, so I'm just going to share some of those with you today, and we'll see how it goes. Um, we'll probably get into some inversions. That's a way of kind of flipping things around. Um, and to do that, we'll need to warm up the wrists and shoulders a bunch. So um, you can take your blocks out from underneath, and I'm going to grab um, a pole. But if you don't have a pole, you could grab a strap or um, a towel or a belt or a piece of cloth, um, probably just long enough, like maybe five or six feet, um, depending on your shoulders. So a broomstick or a mop pole would also work really well. A shower curtain might work. Um, take the pole, and we've already done some of these on YouTube, so maybe you've seen this already, but feet about hips with distance apart, and then inhaling every time you come up, opening up your shoulders, and exhaling as you come over the top. So inhaling, exhaling. Inhaling, exhaling. 
So you'd like to keep your elbows straight, and if you're using a reflection or a mirror, you wanna check that you're not doing anything wonky, right? So not letting your arms go to the side, right? Keeping the space, the hollows between your arms and your head and neck um, even. And um, checking if you're doing anything kind of weird. I, I can tell I, I'm doing a little bit with my ribs, right? So if you're letting your ribs like, go out to get the pull under, try to keep your ribs in and your head in one spot so you're not like ducking under the pole to try to get underneath or anything like that. So I usually do about 20 of these and by then my shoulders are pretty tired and I've lost track, but after about 20, um, switch your hands the other way, so palms face up and then up and over. And these um, I've learned through Katona Yoga, right? So um, I've been taught them by multiple teachers in that style. Um, I think Brian Nygaard was the first one to really uh, show me how to do it. And um, yeah, he was very strict and it was like the hardest thing I'd ever done, right? So you wanna make sure that you're not doing anything funky with your chin, your shoulders, right? Your feet are staying grounded, right? It really helps use your reflection. Ooh, and again, I've lost track, but my shoulders are getting tired, so we'll say, that's 20. When I'm not talking, I really do do right 20, right? Because then it's like I say, okay, I'm going to do 20, and then I do 20, and then that's good, right? I say, okay, you did it, right? If I wanted to do more, I could always add on, right? So then, right, this next one, you want to think of taking the cobwebs out behind you, right? So you're going around behind your head and then coming back around. Let's see, three, four, five. Try not to bend my elbows. Six. Seven, breathing, eight, nine. It's gonna do 10 one way, and then 10 the other for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, and part of the reason this can create a little lightness is because you're really using your lungs. Um, for our break, you can just put the, the pole on your shoulders and sway a little side to side, getting a twist in. Three, four, ribs, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Um, there's a nice twist here. Still definitely working on this, right? So feet a little bit wider. And then you can take one end of the pole and place it in front of the opposite foot. I think Brian learned these from Naveen. Naveen Mishan is one of the founders of Katona Yoga. All right, hips go back, right? Chest opens up. Take an inhale. You can imagine looking up towards your top hand and then drawing yourself all the way around. And there's some videos. Some, if you look up Katona Yoga pole work, you'll find a video on this, right? So um, not exactly maybe this one, but on the stuff you can do with the pole. Naveen does a really nice job explaining it. So starting to warm up your sides, right? Getting a nice twist in. Just gonna do one more time each side. I have to slide the pole down to get it to touch the ground. Right? And I notice my knee wants to go in, so I'm gonna try to pull this right knee out and back. Still definitely a beginner at these. Oh, all right, so let's see. Oh, here's another one. Okay, so this one is, um, you try to line yourself up. I'm gonna use the mirror, right? So that your, let's see, fingertips, shoulders, and hips are all the same height, right? So hopefully from the side, Right, I'm pretty squared up. And then you watch the pole, right? Come around, press down through your feet. Good, lift your chest, okay? Back bending, looking at the pole. Coming all the way back around. And then back to, hopefully, <laughs> right? Hips back, fingertips in line, and then the other way. Mmm. All right, so that feels good. One more time. Okay, something like that. And I put the pole down. And I come into a tabletop position. Um, and then just measure the tabletop, 
right? So this is also a technique that I learned through Katana Yoga, and it's just that you want to have your thighs, right, uh, parallel, perpendicular with the floor, rather, and same thing, right, 90 degree angles between your shoulders and wrists, right? So usually in tabletop, it ends up pressing you a little farther forward into your hands than you might be used to, but that's actually where you want to be, right? So your hands are truly plugged in, your knees are plugged in, and the tops of your feet are even plugged in. And then um, to warm up, right, it's an exhale on the cow, right? So inhaling as you round and exhaling as you look out. So it's paradoxical breathing, actually, rather than anatomical breathing. And a little faster, maybe even a lot faster than you would normally go to just get a little heat built in your body. I know it looks really, really silly, right? But it will get you warm. And if you're not able to practice in the hot room right now, right, this is a great way to do it, to get yourself warmed up. You want to think of um, striking a match, right, especially from your pelvis, right? So your sitting bones, right, really going. And then it's hard to do in talk raises in your neck, right, relax. I can feel my neck getting caught up. All right, so you could do that, right, getting warmed up as you go, trying to keep plugged in through your hands and your feet, and then letting your spine kind of wave rather than just bend like a paper clip. So um, not just going back and forth in one spot, but trying to let it travel. So you're lengthening in both directions, really lengthening as you press down and also lengthening as you look out. Okay, so hopefully a little bit of heat built that way. I'm going to take the blocks out. All right, I'll put them over here. Great, and then I'm um, stirring your hips round. So just going round the circle. Right, like your hips are going around a clock now. I see somebody, sometimes people start moving their whole body at this point, and I think that that doesn't really let you get into the hip joint as well. And so just trying to isolate your hips at first and go forward. It might end up traveling up your body some, but it's not the same as going around like the clock is on your mat. You want to think of the clock being behind you, right, and your seat going around. And again, it's nice to give yourself a count on this, so maybe 20 times one way, and then about 20 times the other. And you could flip your hands as you do this, right, to try to, um, oh, <laughs> it's like rubbing your head and uh, patting your belly. I keep going this way. There you go. All right, so you want to look out as you do it. There's a tendency to kind of look down instead. And then once you've gone about 20 times both ways, just flip your hands back the normal way, curl your toes, lift your sitting bones up and back into downward facing dog, and then start to bend your right knee, reach your left heel down, stretch out to your left side, bend your right knee, reach your hips out to the other side, getting that stretch through your side body. You can really breathe length and space through your left and right sides. And then coming back to the center, Right. You might stretch your feet out a little bit, right? You could curl your toes, right? press out through the arches by right? lifting your hips way up and then reaching your feet down. You could take your right foot and just make some gentle circles around so you get your ankle and knee and hip warmed up a little bit and maybe both ways again. Right, then from your downward facing dog, just walk on back to the back of your mat and um, you can fold over your thighs and really bend your knees so you end up right in the hip joint and let your upper body hang over your legs. So you're trying not to hold on in your back, right? just letting your hips do the work. Cup your hands to opposite elbows. Let the weight of your head drop. Take an inhale into your back. And as you exhale, bend your knees, bring your knees into your armpits, right? your feet stay hips width. Right, chest goes forward, right, looking forward, and then press back through your feet, let your hips rise, your head drop two more times, right, knees to armpits, that'll get, give you the fit of the thigh bone and the hip. And then um, there's a nice little way to find your downward facing dog, and um, I'm just going to show you, and you would need a folding chair for this, so I don't know if you might have one available or not, but um, yeah, it's just kind of good to know, it's a nice prop. And it goes with the idea of lightness because it kind of takes a lot of the work out of the pose. Right, so you let the chair kind of give you the angle and let the chair do a lot of the work. And again, this is um, a technique that I learned from Katona Yoga, but I've also seen it in Iyengar Yoga. Um, so it's been around a while, I do believe. And I'm going to grab some blankets. 
Oh, just to make it a little more comfortable. So depending on the length of your legs and arms, you might need a slightly different setup. You might need the blocks underneath your hands. You might not need blocks underneath your feet. Um, I'm going to see if one blanket is enough so it doesn't bother my hips. And this um, lip of the chair ends up fitting right where your thighs meet your pelvis, right? So right at your hip crease. Otherwise, it doesn't feel so good, right? And so then I find that the chair gets to hold me up. And my feet are still on something, right? I like the lip of the block, feels good around my toes. And then folding over the top and reaching the arms out long. I can bend my knees. On the chair. You can reach your fingertips out long and just let your hips be lifted so high that it makes downward facing dog feel really easy. You get the length to your sides. You can walk your fingertips out to the right side here. Maybe reach out long through your left fingers. And then walk them over the other way. All right, so that's just kind of a way of finding a downward facing dog. If you don't have someone to kind of give you that assist, it can be a nice thing to do for yourself. Um, yeah. I'm going to take the stuff and move it out of the way. We might use the chairs again later. All right, so right from downward facing dog, you get to inhale your sitting bones high, soften your knees, gaze forward, and then press the floor away as you lightly walk your feet up. You can even try lifting your foot up and trying to just barely tap the back of your wrist and bring it back. And then barely tap the back of your wrist and bring it back. You want to have that feeling of plugging your hands in, pressing through your back, drawing your belly up and in, and trying to be as light as you can through your legs and hips. Whoop. Okay, and then when you do end up with your feet up in between your hands, I right, measure two fist distance again. Okay, inhale and roll into your half lift, lengthen your spine, so sternum reaching away from your sacrum, right, abdominal muscles drawing and chest forward, and folding over the top. Inhale, sweep your arms sideways and up. You can reach your fingertips up, hook your thumbs like you're making a shadow butterfly, so you get a little boundary. Inhale, reach up, lift up out of your waist, lift your chest, and folding up and over the top, all the way back in and down. Inhale and roll into your half lift. Exhale, both hands down, step your feet back and pause in an upward push-up plank and then bring your knees down to the ground. Right, bring your hands underneath your shoulders and find that your shoulder blades can move on your back, right, scapular push-ups. Right, you want to keep the um, ribs and the scapula right, usually moving um, so that they're, they're connected, right? So one trick I've heard is that um, you'd like whatever gravity wants your scapula to do, you basically want to do the opposite. So if here your ribs would want to drop, instead you want to push away. Right, looking forward, you can curl your toes under, lift your knees up if you want. Right, take an inhale and then just lower halfway down, collarbones broad, and press straight back up. Again, like you're one piece, take an inhale, exhale halfway down, and push straight back up. Again, take an inhale and then slowly lower all the way down to the ground. Lay your toes long. Right, slide your fingertips back a little bit. Inhale, roll your shoulders around, down, and back. Peel your spine long, tail long, chest opens up, and then slowly lowering back on down. And then if you feel warmed up enough to do an upward facing dog, you could do that, or you can just stick with what you just did, right? Or skip it, right? If it's, your back's bothering you at all. Curl your toes under, hover up off the mat. Inhale, rolling forward, right? Almost like you're pulling the mat back to pull your chest forward. So legs reaching long, tailbone down, and then lengthening up like your ears want to lift. Right? Shoulder blades on your back, lifting your chest and then curling your toes back under, hips back up and into the air, like <laughs> if you wish you had a chair still. All right, back into your downward facing dog. All right, so we're gonna work into some arm balances and some, some headstand, handstand stuff. Um, so, 
Yeah, so come on down to your knees and bring your forearms down to the ground and um, really press the floor away. Right, so as you do that, you might notice that when you push away, your elbows are going to want to slide out to the sides. I know, mind you, I think that happens to a bunch of people. Um, see if you can keep your elbows parallel. One trick is to let the mat kind of catch your skin, and then just let your, um, the bones of your forearms right, kind of slide out and get caught on the mat. Um, I feel like maybe mine will stay in. Yeah, right now they would, but if I start to push up into... Um, into a forearm balance, I feel like they might slide out. So another way of handling that is to take a block and just put it between my hands. And if I do that, then it's way less likely that my hands are gonna, or my elbows are gonna slide out because I've got something to push against. And that helps to engage the muscles all the way into my back and keep my forearms in, right? So you could hold the block like this, or you could hold it like this, or um, some people even do, do it with their palms up. Right, so there's lots of variations in the hands. It does make a little bit of a difference because of the way the forearm bones are positioned will affect the way your shoulders are positioned. Um, but I've never heard it said that any one is wrong, right? Just different variations. So I like to hold the block like this, right? Elbows catch the mat, curl the toes under, lift the hips up, and then, you know, lifting one leg up and just trying to play with the shoulders, right? Pressing away, right? And then maybe lifting the other leg up and again, playing with the shoulders, right? Pushing away. And right, now if you feel like you're pretty confident that you're not going to go over the falls, if you come into a form balance, you could absolutely just kick on up. Um, I think I might go over the falls. So I would start first using the wall, right? So I've got a wall right here. I'm just going to use um, the block. And I don't really even need the mat, but it'll help keep my forearms from slipping a little bit. So I'm going to bring it to the wall anyway. And forearm balancing is actually a really nice one. It's a great prep for headstand because it's kind of like what you're doing in headstand in that you really don't want any weight. Ooh, is that gonna stay? You really don't want any weight in your head, um, which is tricky because it's the name, right? You're like, well, why do they call it headstand then, right? So yeah, get the mat all lined up, just being picky. I'm going to hold onto the block, I look forward, curl my toes under, I right? press the floor away so I'm not dropping my chest, right? I'm choosing the option of my shoulder blades pressing against my ribs, right? and then walking my feet in a little bit. I'm going to look forward at first, and then I'm just going to pick my favorite leg and kick on up to the wall. Okay, from there, I can play with my gaze, I can bring my head through. I'm going to keep pressing through my shoulders by maybe pulling my feet away from the wall. I'm breathing, whoa, breathing wherever I am. And then when I feel like it's time to come down, I can just bring one foot down, the other one down, and come on back. Right, so I actually find that to be quite a bit harder than handstands. Um, just the position of the shoulders is harder for me to hold. Um, but not everyone does, right? And if for people who are more nervous about it, you are closer to the ground, right? So that can be nice. So. If that was successful and felt okay, um, or even if it wasn't, because I think this might actually be a little bit easier in certain ways, um, you could come into a handstand. But before you come into a handstand, there's a few little tricks um, that you might want to try. So one of them is to just measure your feet about a leg's length from the wall. So that's where my hands are going to go. And I bring my palms down right at that spot, curl my toes under, and walk my feet up until I happen to think that the, the cedar is right about at my hip's height, right? So I can't quite tell, but I'm looking for an L between my hands, shoulders, and feet, right? Hips are high, hopefully over my shoulders, right? My shoulders pressing the floor away, right? So I'm trying, I'm not trying to collapse. I'm trying to lift up, right? Breathing here for a moment. And if I can hold this, I can probably, I probably have the upper body strength to hold a handstand. So if it's your first time and you feel like you can do that, you might take out your phone and just kind of watch yourself, like take a picture of yourself or put it up on a video, just so you can see if you actually have your hips and um, your hips right over your shoulders. What tends to happen is people tend to walk their feet too high up the wall actually, and it changes the angles. It actually makes it kind of easier, um, but you do want your hips right over your shoulders. Okay, so let's say that that went well. Um, the next thing to try is kicking up. So if you ever did gymnastics as a little kid, um, you probably started standing, right? And you were like, okay, one, two, three, and like your hands went down and your feet went up. 
in yoga, it's not usually taught that way. Um, it's taught with your hands on the ground and then your feet go up. And that gives you a little bit more control that you're not relying on quite as much momentum. And ideally, over time, you eventually stop relying on momentum at all. You can eventually, ideally, press up, right? So we're not gonna get to that today. But um, your hands, right, not too far from the wall. Right, again, remember that you want the knuckle at the base of your index finger and second finger plugged into the ground, the center of your palm lifting up, and the rest of your hand really making a suction cup so you're not collapsing the bones of your palm. Right, so there's a seal around the edge. Um, different people use different techniques with the hands, right, but you definitely don't want to feel like you're leaning into the outer heel of your palm or collapsing in your carpal tunnel or wrist. Right, so you think of squeezing the mat and let that energy draw all the way up to your arms. Right, your shoulders will eventually come over your wrists and you'll be stacking the weight just like, this one is just like it sounds, right? Headstand, not so much, but handstand, you are really standing on your hands, right? So you get to press the floor away, then look towards the wall, step your foot in, and then again, pick your favorite leg, but then eventually you're gonna wanna switch it out so that both ones get a try. And the first leg starts the kick, but then this second leg is the one that really gets to go for it, right? And a lot of the time, if people are nervous, they don't let the second leg go all the way up. Right, so looking forward, so you can use your head a little bit for that momentum. You get to swing your head through as your leg goes up. Right, you just go whoop, right, and kick on up. Right, you can press the floor away. Right, I usually end up concentrating on my hands, right, just trying not to get my wrists involved too much. Squeezing the mat, pressing through the floor. And then if you want to, you can start to draw one leg away, whoop, and then the other one away, right, breathing wherever you are. And then slowly come on down. Right, so one way to, um, to play with that is to really think about the second leg like it's the one that's going to get you up, right? Okay, so let's just say that that goes really well. Um, another drill that you can do is um, doing it with your fingertips right up against the wall. And for this one, I like to do it for time. And the reason I do it for time is because one of my teachers, his name's Troy Lucero, he teaches up in Capitol Hill. He's amazing at teaching handstands and yoga in general, asana, he's an amazing teacher. Um, he said to me a long time ago, he said, if you can hold um, a handstand for, or this is what I heard him say anyway, you can hold a handstand with your fingertips against the wall for a total of five minutes a day. So you use your timer and you just time yourself and you do one minute and then you come down and then two minutes you come down. You end up getting to a total of five minutes a day over time. He said, you'll definitely be able to hold a handstand away from the wall. And um, I think that really, really helped me, right? So um, you bring your fingertips right up against the wall. And this, um, this takes the banana body out. So it makes it so you can't really arch in your back that much. Otherwise, you'll, you'll pop down off the wall. So let's see if I pop down or not. Right, so fingertips right near the baseboard, right, right up against the wall, right? And then your hips are gonna touch the wall, right? You get to go up, right? And try to hold it there. Right, pressing through your shoulders, drawing your abdominal muscles in, right, maybe even trying to flatten your back to the wall, right, breathing wherever you are, right, maybe you time yourself on the phone and look for, or whatever, right, anything, your watch, anything like that, and then try to hold it for a minute or so. Right, you're lifting up out of your shoulders, right, breathing here. And then this isn't gonna be a full minute, but when you're ready, you come on down, right? And so that's a really good drill for practicing holding handstands away from the wall. All right, another one I really like is um, measuring about a foot from the wall. Well, not a foot, a leg's length distance from the wall. And this one you can make into a game. So um, I know that my hands, if I put my hands here and I were to fall over, I would kick the wall before I fell all the way into a back bend, right? And my back bends aren't that great, so I don't really want to fall all the way into a back bend, right? So um, I'm going to put my hands right down here. And, um, you know, if I were to kick up and just let my let go, right? I know I can touch the wall, right? But the game is gonna be that I don't let myself do that, right? If I end up touching the wall, then I have to come back down. So I'm trying to stick it in the middle and not end up relying on the wall. Um, so yeah, so I know it's there, but I'm not gonna use it. And I'm just gonna practice kicking up. So again, setting my hands, super important for me. I'd squeeze the mat, right? And then I'm just gonna try and see what happens. Oh, there's the wall. I went too far, so then I'd have to come down. All right, but I don't feel scared because I know it's there, right? So I'm just trying to stick it right in the middle. Oh, and again, right? But you get the idea there. So that would be two wall, zero, Liz. All right, so you can keep playing with that. 
Um, another way to kind of play with the same idea, and for this I'm actually going to pull it away from the wall. It's, um, the reason it's a little bit of the same idea is because there's a tendency to go over in handstands. Um, but if you let your legs go into a split and then slowly pull them towards the center, that can make it a little bit easier. Right? So it's easier to find the center. Okay, so let's say that I was kind of playing around with that. If I'm going to take one leg. Oh, come on. oh, there it is. There's a split. You can kind of hang out, push the floor down. And then slowly, slowly, try to pull everything in. All right, so I haven't been practicing handstands a lot, but that is um, kind of a nice way to play with them. And it's a kind of a nice way to kind of lighten your mood if you're feeling heavy. It's just playing around with being upside down tends to throw you out of whatever you know, else you were thinking about because there's not a whole lot that you can kind of um, obsess over while you're upside down except for being upside down. Um, so headstands, right? Headstands, I think, is actually the trickiest one of these upside down things, right? Pinchamayarasana, um, handstands, what is that, Vrikasana, and um, I think it's Vrikasana, uh, and then uh, headstands. So before we actually get into like a normal headstand, I'm going to use the chairs again. And this is a way of being kind of like in a headstand. It's a way of spending time upside down um, without actually having any weight in your head. I should probably put the mat. I'm going to put the mat underneath the chairs just so the chairs don't slip on me. I don't think they would, but, you know, that would be embarrassing, right? So <laughs> trying not to do that. All right, so two folding chairs right against the wall. I'm going to put um, a bolster on each one. You could use a pillow or a blanket, right? Just something soft for your shoulders. It might be a good idea to have a spot for this one um, if it's your first time doing it. Put the pillows this way. This I definitely learned from Troy Lucero again in Capitol Hill. And you want to make sure that you can, um, oh, Acme Yoga Project, right? You want to make sure that your head will fit through, but not your shoulders too, right? So I'm actually going to put my hands on the chair, but let the, um, the bolsters be there for my shoulders. And again, just check that my head fits. Oh, that's too tight now. <laughs> Get my head right on through. All right, and then just rolling up, all right? So you can tuck into a little ball if you want, and then let your legs go up. Oh my gosh, and this actually feels really comfortable, right? My shoulders are really relaxed. A little bit on my hair, but aside from that. And then you can do anything you want with your legs here. Right? You can come into a split, right? Or just kind of play around and spend some time being upside down without, um, without having to have any weight in your head or in your hands. Right? So it gets around wrist stuff and a lot of, it gets around a lot of neck stuff anyway. Okay. And then when you're ready to come on down, you slide your feet down the wall, press through your palms on the chair, and slowly, right, come on down. All right, so if you're working on getting upside down, that's a nice way to kind of practice letting your body get used to being upside down. Um, for headstand, right, so you would like to have, again, very little weight in your head, so you've got to push away with your shoulders. And um, there's a couple different ways to get up, but I think um, piking or tucking up is the way to go because kicking up, I think, is a little bit less controlled. And um, again, you're playing with weight in your head and neck, and you might not want to mess, mess with that too much. And it's also not to say that it can't be done. Um, Dharma Mitra is kind of famous for his headstand with no hands on the top of a manhole cover in New York City. So, um, as far as I know, his neck is fine, right? So it's not to say that you can't build up the strength in your neck to be able to comfortably do headstand even with no weight in your hands and shoulders, um, but to err on the safe side. Right, you find the forearms pressing down. Or you can bring your palms together. 
right? You can let your pinky fingers go and maybe even your index fingers go too. That'll give you a little more stability, right? And then, you know, your elbows about forearms distance apart, curling the toes under. Weight, the little bit of weight is gonna go right behind the hairline, like the noogie spot right behind your hair. Hair out of the way. Right, finding that the forearms aren't gonna slide out, right? So kind of the same idea as in forearm stand or Pinchamarasana. I am gonna place that little hair spot just down, but very little weight there. And then just slowly let the hips go beyond the shoulders. So there's a cantilever effect. And then the legs come up. I am breathing the entire time, hopefully, or at least, <laughs> I guess I'm talking the entire time, right? And then, right, you wanna be able to press the floor away. So your head, my head's hovering just barely up off the floor. So my husband, Matt, will joke, it's a hair stand, right? Not a headstand, right? So it's like you're standing on your hair, right? So you're wrapping your shoulder blades round. You can imagine someone placing a, a pole, like one of those um, wooden poles that I used earlier, like they're gonna slide it between your ear and your forearm, like right around your shoulder. It'll make you wrap your shoulders in the right position. And then breathing here for a moment. Right, to come on out, right? You could tuck your knees. You could also come in this way, right? Tucking your knees in, right? And then slowly, slowly, right? Rolling on down. Right, coming on down. If you're learning that, it's nice to use um, a corner right of a room so you're not um, gonna fall out either way. If you did fall over the top, you wanna let your hands go and just try to do a somersault. Um, yeah, so once you've done it, right, you can come into a child's pose and just let your forehead rest and breathe into your back. And there's a lot more you can do with all these things with headstand, forearm stand, and um, handstands for sure, right? So just kind of like a little bit of playing with being upside down. And breathe into your back here, right? Find some length through your sides, length through your shoulders. And draw yourself back into downward facing dog, right? Curling your toes, lifting your hips. And just playing it a little bit. To you decompress your wrists, right? You might um, stand on your hands, right? So if your wrist did get a little bit of um, you know, just a little bit worked, right? It's giving yourself some room to have some space and through your back, you can bend your knees. Right? Breathe into your back, let there be lots of length. Right, so you can stand off your hands. Right, inhale into a half lift. And then come on down. And um, usually handstands aren't taught in Ashtanga until like quite late on. I think they don't show up until the fourth series or something like that. And I've been told that the reason is that they um, will create more muscle around your shoulders and upper back and stuff. So it makes it harder to do back bends. And back bends are, they're kind of like what is prioritized first, right? So um, if you're doing a lot of handstands, you wanna balance that with some back bending stuff. And um, there's lots of ways to do some nice supported back bends. And a lot of them use a chair or some blocks. Um, so I'm gonna use two blocks. And first I'm just actually gonna use one block. Um, here's the block. Here's the other block, okay. And um, bring it right behind your shoulder blades. This might not seem like much, right? But it feels really nice. All right, so the block underneath your shoulders. Take your hands to opposite elbows. Right, take your hands over your head. And give yourself a nice inhale here. And let the weight of your head, hands and head and shoulders drop. You could even put a stand bag in your hands and let your hands be heavy over your head this way. And you might find a, quite a strong stretch in your shoulders. You might also bring two blocks right underneath your sacrum. Right, on the highest height, right? This is gonna be the last one I show, even though there are many more, just because we're running out of time. So you can curl your toes, right? Lift your hips up, right? Blocks underneath your back. Right, just checking that you've got two, so your sacrum is really supported and that they're in the right direction. Right, you can interlace your fingers and try to grab them if you want. This is again one that I've learned from many different teachers, including Ivy Ray of Katona Yoga. Just letting your belly drop. You 
You could stay here for quite a little bit. And then when you're ready, press through your feet, right? Lift your hips, take the blocks out. Slowly let your hips come down first. Okay, that's a nice one to stand a little longer than I just did. You just give yourself a good breath. Check in with yourself. See what else might feel good. Hopefully that just got you started on some things that might kind of lighten you up if you're feeling a little bit down. Um, yeah, so thanks for watching and I hope to see you soon.